Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the FOF Quilt Ambition 630. In this video, I'm going to show you some basic sewing and basic operations of the machine. To start with, when your machine wakes up, when you first turn it on, you're going to get straight stitches. So if you want to do straight stitches, there you go. It's right there. To get into some of the other stitches that are shown up here on the, the top here, you can just press this right here. This shows we're in stitch number one. Just touch that and look at all the stitches. They're right there. Any particular stitch that you want, say you want a zigzag, touch that. There you go. You're right into zigzag. Now, of course, zigzag can be widened, and it shows that all right on the screen. It can be shortened, and if you want to go back to uh, default for that zigzag, remember it's number five, just reselect five, and it's back to the default for that stitch. Okay, I'm going to go back to stitch number one here, and when you're sewing a seam, here I got two layers, when you're sewing a seam, you generally speaking want to have a back stitch at the beginning and at the end of your seam. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Here's your back stitch button. So let's get started. I've got the speed slider on slow so that we can see how that works. Start sewing, press, let go. And then when you're done sewing, so you want to do another back stitch. Press, let go. Uh-oh, it's keeping on sewing. Why did it do that? It's because when this light is lit up, that means it's going to keep on sewing backwards. To turn that off, go like this. So I'm going to show you again how to stop at the end of your seam. You need to make sure that you keep your machine sewing in motion. I'll show you how that works. Okay, going slow, getting ready to stop, press, hold, let go. And did you see how it reversed directions that way? That's because the machine was in motion. It may take a little getting used to, but I think it'll be a really useful way to seal off the ends of your seam. There's another way to do that. And that would be, cut my threads here. That would be to use this little tie off button. Now I'm gonna show you how that works. You press this here first and see that light comes on. So this means that it's gonna tie it off at the end of the stitching when we press that button. So we're sewing along, here we go. When we press this button, you can take your foot off the pedal and stop. As long as you've got that, it does a little tie off button, a little tie off. And then you can cut your threads right there. So you noticed there's two different ways you can cut your thread. Of course, you can use your scissors, that's the third way. This little button here, which cuts your threads and leaves little thread tails on the back. You can cut it too well that way. There we go. Leaves little thread tails, there we go, right there. And another way is this thread cutter right here. So if you've got extra long threads, you can just cut them like that. Okay, so it leaves this little tiny knot here. That's what this does, right here. And Notice when I stopped, I stopped sewing, I pressed this button, it stopped sewing and gave me that little knot. So what if you wanted that at the beginning as well as at the end? Start out by pressing this, press this button here, lower your presser foot. Now watch what it does. It does a little knot right there at the beginning, stops, I lift my foot off and then put it back down and start sewing. Wherever I want to stop, press this again, press this again, keep my foot on the pedal until it stops. There, it stopped. Now, you can set your machine so that it stops with needle down if you want. And that would be, needle down right there, and you can start sewing it would stop with needle down. Of course, you can always lift the needle up using the button like this. Okay, so needle down, stop with needle down, needle up, and you saw that earlier, it stopped with needle up. If it stops with needle down, you can always just push your cutter button that will cut the threads and bring the needle up at the same time. 
So that's some basic operations with your straight stitch. You can always shorten your stitch length or lengthen it. If you lengthen it, you'll see when it's not in the default for that stitch, um, it's longer, it, the, green, the numbers are green there. So this would be great for a basting stitch. Basting is, of course, stitching that you want to be able to take out later on. Um, you can also shorten your stitch length. Now, quilters like to tend to have their stitches a little bit shorter. I'm going to go back to reselect and get that back to default. Maybe a, oh, okay, wait a minute, I did that wrong. Get back into this, here we go. Push the wrong button. Okay, so if we wanted to shorten this stitch length, we would push this negative button right here. 2.0 is good for quilt piecing, those are where you're putting your patches or your quilt together because the stitches are short enough to act like a um, reverse stitch. Yeah, I mean, they, they do the same thing. They don't come apart as easily, kind of like the opposite of, of basting that comes apart easily. So <clears throat> for a quilt piecing, you'd use a shorter stitch length. But to get back into a uh, regular Stitch length for garment stitching, 2.5 is the normal stitch length. And you can see that is the default. You can also move your needle over from side to side. So let me show you that. Okay, look down here. See how I'm moving my needle over? And you can also just press and hold, and it will just step along by itself. And you can see up here in the picture how it's moved all the way over to that side. You could also move it back. I'm going to just reselect that, get that to default. And see, zero, zero is right in the middle. It's not to one side or the other. So here it's going in the other direction, positive. So what that's good for is if you're sewing zippers or some, something where you need to have it a certain distance from, say, the edge of, uh, edge of a collar or something where you're trying to get an even... Uh, uh, with seam allowance with or like pin text that's another example of that again how do we get back to the default for that stitch instead of stepping it over one at a time just reselect the stitch and it puts it right back in the middle okay so that's your basic sewing what about some of your specialty stitches or some of your other utility stitches <clears throat> if you were going to do something like this is applique. Okay, applique is where you take another piece of fabric, put it on there, and do a zigzag around the edges. Really nice stitch is right here. That's your applique stitch. And of course, you can make it narrower if you want, but that's about the right density for your applique stitch. So it's a stitch that's already built into your machine. Okay, and then let's get into... The difference between five and six, when you're in zigzag number five, when you widen and narrow that stitch, I'm gonna show you that. See how it widens and narrows from the center outwards? Okay, six, on the other hand, when you widen that one, it widens and narrows from the right towards the left. This is a really good one if you're overcasting say the edge of some denim or something and you want to take maybe a little bit bigger bite into the fabric you can do that without having to lift up your presser foot and move your fabric over you can just simply use number six to make your zigzag a little bit wider okay um Number nine is a three-step zigzag. Now, it doesn't show it in the picture, but there's a couple extra stitches in the middle there. And the three-step zigzag really shines for something like this, where you are doing a mend. You can see it on the back a little bit easier, where it's giving you a couple stitches in between. And it's, I've gone over this several times, and it's a nice, strong mend. So that's number nine. Uh, number 10 and 11 are similar, but they just have one stitch between the zig and the zag. Okay, and we also have your blind hem stitch, which I can show you in a different video. We have stretch stitches. This stretch stitch is really good for doing knits, 
that need some stretch in the seam to keep the, the seam from popping when it stretches. This is like a bent zigzag. That's basically how it works. Now, another stitch that's really nice is this one here. It looks like the other one, but let me show you what that does. Okay, say, so you're making some pants and your woven denim is pretty stable on the straight of grain, but not so much on the bias. So you've got some bias seams, like for instance on your jeans and the back crotch seam of your jeans where that's gonna stretch. This seam is really good for that. So I'm gonna show you that. What this is gonna do is gonna take two stitches forward and one stitch back. See how that does that? And then of course you can shorten that if you want to. Make it a little bit shorter, there we go. And I'm just pressing a little bit harder on the, the pedal. But this has, because it has two stitches forward and one stitch back, you don't even need to do a back stitch or a locking stitch on this. You can just go ahead and cut your threads when you're done sewing. Every stitch is locked in and it has plenty of stretch for those back crotch seams. This is also a good one for doing bags and um, backpacks where you need an extra so strong seam has like three times as much thread in there because it's going each over each of those stitches three times. This is also a nice one for a nice uh, bold top stitching. Okay, now I want to show you something about, and I mentioned this in the accessories video, but this multi-tool is really nice. So speaking of jeans, let's say you're hemming your jeans. You've got your edge all nice and finished. You've put up your hem where you want it to be and you're stitching along. I'm going to take the thread out of this for now just so that you can see the action of the, the stitches without the thread in the way because um, I want to be able to use this for another seam. This is also a situation where you might want to move over your needle a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm sewing along. Whoops, here let me get back into stitch number one. There we go. And I'm going to move my needle over, there we go. And I'm gonna lengthen this. Now, the reason why I'm lengthening my stitch is because this is thicker fabric and it's got, the thread has more distance to go to get through all the layers. So that's why I've lengthened my stitch. And then of course I've moved my needle over so I can get more of, closer to the, the raw edge here. So when I'm sewing along, see how that uh, foot tips up and tends to want to get kind of bogged down there. So let's go do needle down, lift up the presser lever, and we're gonna use our multi-purpose tool, put it right behind the foot so that those toes of the multi-purpose tool on, are on either side of the needle, and then it just stitches right across. Isn't that nice? That's what this multi-purpose tool is for. This part is a little bit thinner, it's a little bit thicker for if you have even thicker seams that you're trying to go across. Then of course that's uh, for putting your needle in. Okay, let's take that out of there. Okay, so let's get into some decorative stitching. So here we have a lot of utility stitches and you can page ahead this way and find different stitches, but you also got major groups of stitches right here. You can look up and up above here and see, oh, there's some major groups. Okay, well, let's go to this one right there. That one shows you a lot of your um, satin stitches. If you were gonna do a satin stitch, say for instance, that one, notice the foot it calls for, foot 2A. And 2A is this foot right here. It's a two and an A. Also is calling for not using your IDT, your upper walking foot. So we pull that down, lift it out um, backwards like that, and that disengages it. The reason why you would want to have your, the walking foot disengaged is that way it's not going to put a lot of abrasion on those satin stitches. And you want to use the two-way foot because it's got this groove in the back here that's going to help those stitches flow right on through. So this is a really helpful place to look when you're doing that. Okay. So you can also do lettering. 
Okay, let's get out of that there. You can do lettering right there. And here we have, you can spell things out. Let's spell out FAF. Okay, capital P, lowercase f, a, f, f. And if you want to put a space in there, there's a space right there. And we can put uh, numbers. We go six, three, zero. And there we go. Now you can move your cursor over. Right now, this, this L-shaped red line is under the zero. So if I wanted to take that out, I would simply take that out this way. I want to leave it in. But if I misspelled a word, I could move the cursor using these buttons right here. As long as I've got that under the letter that I want to change, I could take that out or put in a different letter. Okay, so that's your basic lettering. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Now, if I want to just get rid of that one letter, I just push this once. If I wanna get rid of everything up here, just press and hold and it gives you delete all stitches. Yes, that's what I want to do. It's nice that it gives you that extra little screen because if you press it too long, it will delete everything, but it gives you a chance to say, oh no, I don't I only want to delete that one, not the whole thing. So it gives you that extra yes, no question, which is a, a great feature for me to have. Um, this is sequencing. Now with sequencing, you can choose a stitch. Let's go into some of our decorative stitches. I'm gonna page ahead a little bit. Say I want one of those. See how it gave me just one little star there. Okay, I'm gonna do a different stitch. I'm gonna get into decorative stitches again. I'm gonna do one of these here. So this here gives us a little star and some leaves. It looks like a little flower. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna stitch it over and over again. Star, leaves, star, leaves, and it looks like you have a little line of flowers. Now this settings button is really helpful too here. Thread tension, notice you don't have a little uh, dial anywhere to set your thread tension. This is how you do it right here. So you can make your thread tension tighter or looser depending on what you want to do. Say for instance you have a thin bobbin type thread and a thicker decorative thread at the top. So add a stitch sample. If you can see some of your bobbin thread on the top, well you may want to loosen your top tension. Twin needle. Now this is a really interesting one to have. If you do twin needle, then you can, um, depending on the width between the two needles, you can set that right here. So if it's three millimeters, or uh, in the case of default, it was 1.6 mill millimeters. What that's gonna do is, with these decorative stitches up here, it's gonna prevent the needles from going so far that the needles hit the foot or the needle plate. That's what that's about. But when we're not using a twin needle, you wanna have that off. Stitch width safety, that's about, if you use this foot here, say you're doing a quilt piecing and you wanna make sure that that needle doesn't get pushed to one side or the other, you turn on stitch width safety and that makes sure that you only can stitch straight, you can't do a zigzag. So for most normal stitching, I have that off, but for quilt piecing and you're using this foot, turn that one on. And of course you can change the language there if you want to sew in Spanish. There you go. Okay, then we have, if you uh, page down a little bit more here, we have the audible alarm. I like having that little alarm, that little beep that we hear, uh, but you can always turn that off if you want to. Going down a little bit more, we have the software version. It told, tells you about that. And then cat, touch cal, uh, cal Calibrate touch screen. This is your touch screen. So let's say you wanted to touch a, um, say, stitch number 88, and you had to move your finger clear over to 82 in order to get 88 to work. Well, that means it needs to be recalibrated. So what you would do with that is you touch that little X there. Each one that shows up, touch that one, touch that one. It's really very simple. And that means it's been recalibrated. It's a way for you to kind of get the touch screen to work the way you want it to do. It's not something you need to do unless it seems like it's a little out of calibration, but there it is. And the way you get into that is with settings. So to get out of settings, just touch your regular sewing. Okay, um, these little icons here, I'm gonna show you what that is. Let's go to, 
I'm going to get into decorative stitches and page ahead a little bit. Okay, so let's go with some bells. There we go. Okay, if I wanted to turn that over, so that's going to stitch out this way. So if I wanted to turn it side to side, I would use this one here. If I wanted to turn it upside down, I would use that one there. And then you can always go back to your default that way. So this is a useful feature, say for instance, if you're stitching a line of hearts at the hem of a little girl's dress and you wanted to make sure those hearts were sitting right side up without having to put the body of the garment over here, you wanted to have the body of the garment here and the hem right here. Then you may want to use these buttons to turn the motif over. It's also a nice way to, um, let me get it into that. I think I'm gonna try sequencing here. I'm gonna clear this. Remember how we do that? Press hold. Yes, delete all stitches. Go back into here. And I'm gonna page ahead, page ahead. Okay, this is a nice one. Got one of those. Now I'm gonna get a second one of those. So I'm gonna go back into that again and page ahead. Get a second one. Okay, so we got a second one. That one there, I can actually turn that one over this way. Okay, this is gonna give me a line of little leaves this way and leaves this way. It'll do that uh, in a complete line all the way down my fabric. So that's a way that you can use these turnover keys to turn your sewing motif either way. And it's wonderful that you have this screen up here that shows you in real time what that's gonna look like. Okay, so how do we get back into regular stitching? First of all, let's dump the garbage. Yes, okay, that's all cleared out. Let's go back into regular sewing. Got to get back into regular sewing. So regular, the utility stitches are all this one to 45, get right up there, and there you go. It's not necessarily necessary to turn off your machine. I mean, you could, and it would come back on, but. I just showed you how to get into regular sewing. It's pretty easy. Remember this button right here is gonna be your friend because it's gonna show you all your stitches. You can page ahead, you can get the various families of stitches right there. And you can start sewing when your screen is like this. You don't have to get back into um, this screen. You can if you want to. So this machine has a lot of versatility to it. Try things out. And if this video has been helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, there's an area down below where you can leave those comments or questions. Also, we have other videos on this machine, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, bye.